Hello, everybody. Welcome to our episode of Extra Stage Podcast. I'm here with my little Miss Sunshine Ginta. <laughs> Hi, guys. And we're here in Spring Studios in Los Angeles, California. And today we're going to talk about a very sensitive topic, how we met the loves of our lives. Both of them are named Brian. And Brian. Brian. <laughs> and a little bit different, but... Almost the same. <laughs> Sounds almost the same. So Ginta, I am <laughs> dying to share your story with the world and everyone. And, you know, do you want to start? Yes, <laughs> let's dive right in. Thank you for introduction, Marina. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting topic. I feel like, especially for me, I haven't really publicly ever talked about it so much. I feel like my private life, I always keep super private. But I'm ready to tell you guys the story <laughs> of my love life. While before I met Brian, I was going through separation because I was married before. And I feel like I was in kind of like dark place for some time, going through crazy emotional roller coaster. Because, you know, separation, divorce is not like an easy process. Even though it was my decision to do so and I was ready for it. Uh, it was just really hard to make that final step and, and, and just be out there in the world on your own. Yeah, there was a, it was during Men's Fashion Week in New York. Uh, my friend who used to work at the agency that I was with in New York, he called me up and he was like, Hey, Ginta, it's uh, Men's Fashion Week and there's this show happening tomorrow called Stamped. And it's a brand uh, based out of California but they were participating in Fashion Week in New York. And he was like, listen, both of us are single. Let's just go out. Let's just have time of our lives. Because he was kind of freshly single too. And um, I haven't really been out at that point for some time because I was really taking time for myself. I was kind of into my shell, you know, hiding from the world. That's a better way than... Yeah, or going, going out and drinking crazy. all night. And yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, I was, I was the one who... Would like curl up at home and just like trying to really figure out what to do in life in terms of like what's like the next step like because you're on your own and you know it's a lot of things to think about especially when you're married and a lot of things to deal with and um, thank god my brother was with me at that time in New York he really hold my hand and helped me through really difficult times so it seems like you had the family and the yes. friends to be there for you. And to this day, I tell my brother, I don't know if I would have survived if he wasn't there with me. Because my brother was studying in New York, so he was living with me and, and we would always be together. And that really helped me in so many levels, especially my emotional state. Um, it's just funny, he would take me upstate outside of New York just to cl clear my head out, you know, just to be out of like the whole mess. Anyways, that's a, that's a little bit of a story, backstory, what happened before I met Bryant, just so you understand where I'm coming from. So the night comes, and um, uh, that day, well, I said the night because we met at the night time, but during the day, <laughs> they had the fashion show, okay. stamped fashion show. So I went with my friend, and um, we saw the show. Did you hop at that moment? Did that what? you're gonna meet someone? Did you go no. there with intention that like, okay, I'm ready? You weren't ready at all. I was not ready at all whatsoever. Okay. Uh, but I always knew what kind of guy I want to meet. I had clear idea of how the guy should be, wow. how he's gonna look, how he's gonna behave, how he's what he likes, what his interests are, and like overall, just like guy that has his shit together, you know. And that was very important for me. And look-wise, too, I knew exactly how I want the guy to look like. It's so really funny Really tall, tall and handsome? Tall, handsome, <laughs> shaved head. <laughs> I wow. love guys with shaved head. <laughs> and, yeah, I was very specific. And it's funny, before I met Brian, the week prior, one of my best friends, um, he was asking me, he's like, okay, Ginta, but what do you look in guy? What is, 
what, what do you want, you know? And I was like, well, to be honest, I don't even think at this point I'm ready to meet anyone, but this is the guy that I would like to meet. And I said, you know, all these qualities, you know, uh, got to be on the same page with me, got to be active, got to be tall, have his shit together, like I said, um, have his career, you know, independent guy and like strong in his will and, and just like uh, funny, smart, shaved head. So <laughs> you said shaved head like seven times, but <laughs> 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 so you think manifestation <laughs> does work because, you know, these days everyone is kind of say to journal it, to mm -hmm. manifest, man manifest, sorry, manifest, right? Yes. So you think it does work when you it definitely works because at, at, but at that point I didn't know that like I'm manifesting. It's just like something I kind of had a clear idea about. But I think it really helps. Once you have that clear idea, then then you just know your pa you know what you're going for. Or you know? not going for, right? Or not going mm -hmm. for. So like when you meet someone, you kind of already know right away. And that's what happened with Brian. Like the second I saw him, I knew he's my person. Because he had shaved head. <laughs> <laughs> One of the reasons why. <laughs> but... Oh, I, I, when I, the minute I saw him, I knew this is the guy, but I didn't know how I'm going to go about it because I'm not the girl who's ever going to go first up to a guy. It's just not who I am. I'm sure, I don't know how I was with other girls, but to me, it's very, I always believe that the guy needs to go up to the girl. And I didn't know how it's going to play that night, but it was pretty funny. So my friend and I, after the show, they had like this dinner event, uh, like a dinner sit down thing, but it was very loosely. It was a bunch of like little tables, like little snacks and uh, champagne and wine and everyone kind of like mingled around. And uh, so me and my friend were sitting like we're sitting right now. Were you guys like looking at each other was Brian? So I will get to that. Okay. It was me and my <laughs> friend I'm sitting. <laughs> it was me and my friend sitting like mm -hmm. this. We we're just having snacks and we're like, listen, let's just have the best time tonight. Like, Let's just have fun, you know? And I haven't had fun in so long at that point. I was like, let's just have wine and just really have a really good time. And then as we were like just talking, catching up, you know, and he looks over my back and he's like, oh my God, there's this hot guy behind you. Uh, and I'm like, you keep staring at him. He's <laughs> like, yeah, because like, you know, I want to get with him tonight. And I was like, what? And I turned just to look at the guy and he was Bryant sitting super close behind my back, like at the other table, but like looking in my eyes and it was so awkward. I didn't oh realize he's sitting so close. Okay. And I turned back with my glass of wine and I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, I can't believe he's sitting so close. You could have warned me not to look. And I'm like, and he's really good looking. And I was like, but I think he's straight. <laughs> so, so your friend is a gay yeah. and he had a crush on Brian. Yes. Basically. And he okay. pointed him out. But that's how it kind of like started. Like that, then I turned back and I was like, oh, my God. And I'm like, listen, I think he's for sure straight. And I really like the guy. But I don't know how I'm going to meet him tonight. And we're just like laughing it off and just like, you know. And I kept on thinking about him in my head. Um, and then at some point I like walked uh, up to a photographer who was there. And I just asked something about the pictures. And Brian just like walked up to me. <gasps> And just start talking to me. He was like, hey. So I'm sure Brian's going to tell his side of story. But basically what he told me, he said that second when I turned around, he was super confused because it was just too intense. You know, because I'm sitting right there. Suddenly I look and he said, you had that look like you knew me. It was very interesting. And um, so I guess I intrigued him. So he decided to approach and walk, walked up to me and we start talking. And we had such a good time. Um, we were like celebrating, then we went somewhere else, kept on celebrating. And just me and Brian, we just like talked the whole time. We had such a good time. And it was funny, we were in a cab driving to the second place and he tried to kiss me and I couldn't because I liked him too much. How funny that sounds, huh? I just... Maybe because you were nervous to like ruin it, you know, yes. ru to ruin it? That moment, yes. Mm. But it was like picture perfect. Imagine you're in a yellow cab in city. It's pouring rain outside. And it's like, 
you're in with this amazing guy and I'm just sitting there like I can't do it <laughs> like he was so funny and in my head I'm like oh my god I like him so much it was really I would say it was love from first sight but oh. it was <laughs> it was really funny how it played out anyway so we had a really good time but then at the end of the night I was like listen I'm gonna go home and uh i knew he's in town a couple more days he was like well maybe we have dinner tomorrow I was like you know and i was like sure or lunch whatever let me know so i go home and he didn't text me that night he didn't even text me like did no. you go home okay nothing what nothing no and i was like <laughs> oh my god he doesn't even care if i go home okay what's if i'm like who knows what happened with me on the way home it's pouring rain outside so i was really kind of upset about it because I thought, like, well, if the guy's interested, he's going to at least f check up on me, make sure I'm okay. So then he only texted me the next day at, like, 5 p.m. and asked me if I want to go for dinner with him and his friend. And I said, no, I'm not going to go for dinner. I was like, it's Friday. I already made plans, which I didn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I was like... W were you waiting all day for him to text you? I was. I'm I was. sure. Because, yeah. again, I'm not going to be the first one texting him. Right. So you were, like dying yeah mm. <clears throat> but i don't want to like sound too like a crazy person like needy yeah needy girl you know i'm mm -hmm. not gonna text first mm -hmm. so i always believe guys the one who needs to make that first step maybe it's like old school thinking of me i was gonna say it's very old school of you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i guess i'm some ways like that um Anyway, so the next day I told him, no, I'm not going to go for dinner. But I knew he's leaving the following day. And I was like, if you want to meet me up, we can go for coffee or lunch before your flight. And he was like, sure. Because keep in mind, too, like the second he told me he's from L.A., I was like, oh, my God, it's so far. You were like less in interested? Not that I was less interested. I was very interested in him, but I was never into L.A. at all. Even my previous relationship, my ex would be like, hey, um, maybe we should move to L.A. I was like, never in my life. It's just not happening. <laughs> and then here I am meeting guy from L.A. And basically a couple years later, moving completely to L.A. for this guy. Because I'm so in love with Brian. So it <laughs> 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 it's kind of crazy. But first couple of years, we did long distance relationship where he would like come to New York and I would come to LA and we would see each other every couple of weeks. And it was kind of good that transition because, you know, he could work, I could do my thing. And uh, we were not on top of each other all the time. It wasn't know? intense from very beginning. So you had time yeah. to find who each other is, mm -hmm. you know, who each other are kind of. But it was interesting too that we kind of move in with each other right away, you know, because I come to LA, we stay at his place. He comes to New York, he stays at my place. So you kind of live in both place, right? And it was very interesting. We didn't really have that like dating stage where like, you know, people are seeing each other and then like eventually make that step to move together. Um, but yeah, I start spending more and more time in LA and eventually he asked me, he asked me to move here. But so when he left after that, oh, I didn't finish to tell you the story about the lunch before his flight. We're having lunch and we're having such good time. And he almost missed his flight. He wanted to miss his flight. But then I was like, listen, you know, you go home. I'm here. We'll figure this out. And like, did you kiss him that day? No. <gasps> no, I didn't kiss him that day. Okay. I was so in love with him. It's, <laughs> it's so <laughs> funny. I was just so nervous. You know, it's just something so precious and i think that's why as well i didn't want to like rush where he's like missing his flight and then like i was too scared he's gonna get ruined you know and i wanted to take time so he came back to la he called me the next day and ever since we just like talked to each other every single day on the phone and uh, two weeks later he decided to come out to new york and that's kind of the beginning of everything because when he came to new york we spent the whole weekend we had like the best time ever just with each other get to know each other and we went to Brooklyn one day, spent the whole day in Brooklyn just wandering around, like just walking around, like like that young love when you just don't care where you are. Completely young yeah. love. Mm. Even our picture, our first picture, we asked some random person on the street and it was at the Milk Studios garage uh, door Aww. at the back. And it's just so, and we're just so chill and you can see just, we're just so happy. So happy you, you know? met each other. Yeah. yeah. 
So that's kind of the story, how it all started. <sighs> it's so beautiful, Ginta. And yeah, knowing you guys now, it's just, it was meant to be, you know? Thanks, babe. I feel the same way. It really meant to be. It's. We have a question, though. Did you kiss him when he came to New York? Yes. Did he stay with you? Yes. Ah! Yes. <laughs> and that's when we're like, oh my God, this is amazing. He's my person. Like, it just oh. all really connected and felt right. And like, I almost feel like if we were kissed the first time, yeah, I'm yeah. sure it was great. Yeah. But in a sense, it worked out for better just to wait those couple of weeks. Because and then he like, it was like a build up. Right. It yeah. was like, that was, I was going to say, it was like yeah. a build up. And he was really looking into yes. it. And you too. Aww. Yeah. So that's my story, Marina. Oh, gosh. But what I'm about like... you? What about you and Brian? How did you guys <laughs> meet? I think me and Brian story is completely the opposite. Um, so I was in a long term relationships um, before Brian. I had two boyfriends, one for seven years. Um, and my last boyfriend before Brian was three years. So I was also freshly broken up, completely heartbroken, like crushed. I thought I'm going to be alone forever. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, you know, getting into my 30s. I was 30 years old and I was kind of single and I just, it just didn't, ha it wasn't happening for me, you know, to, to, to find love or to find someone who, you know, wanted to build a family. Um, I think because a lot of it is because of which world me and you kind of like grew up in and lived in, you know, how a lot of guys are. Mm -hmm. So my friend set me up on a blind date with this guy from California who loved to surf too. Cause and I it was in LA, right? It was in LA too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was like sick of LA, sick of modeling. I was just like, all I want to do is to have a baby and like just live a simple life. You know, mm -hmm. I was kind of burnt out from modeling and living in a big city. So I gave up my apartment in New York and I wanted to move to LA. And the first day I got to LA, I was staying at my friend's house. And she set me up on a blind date. Mm -hmm. It was Sunday in Malibu, little beach house. So I get there and, you know, I see Brian. He was, no, actually he picked me up. Sorry. He picked me up all the way in Santa, where I was staying? And like San Vicente Boulevard. Mm -hmm. And we drove back to Malibu. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, he lived in Venice. So he drove all the way to pick me up in West Hollywood and then to go to Malibu. That's a gentleman move. Yeah, he still remembers that. Really? Yeah. Oh my God. He's like, I can't pick you up, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I remember I opened the car and he's so my type. Like mm -hmm. he's, you know, blue eyes, like blonde hair, like really like California sun kissed, like cutie, like handsome surfer boy. Mm -hmm. um, also, you know, very successful and hardworking and, you know, but I went for looks, you know, in the beginning, course, oh, you know, yeah. at first you see someone, you don't think like, oh, what job they have. You're like, oh, wow, he's handsome, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we go on a date and I can't say it was the love of the fir from the first side, but mm -hmm. he his side of the story that he was very, very hangover and he like didn't talk much. So then we, <laughs> then we kind of, you know, I'm like, oh my God, this guy. And you know me, like I, I talk a lot and mm -hmm. I like kind of talk too much sometimes. So I'm like kind of talking. He tell, he like, we'll like have some wine. We'll loosen up a little. Mm -hmm. He tells me about like his mom, his dad, like his life story. And I was like, okay, he's cute. <laughs> but, like, I love that. But like, it wasn't like, I'm like, wow, I want to spend the rest of la my life with this guy. But I, yeah. I was really at attracted to him. Mm -hmm. um, so then my friend who was organizing the Ocean Gala Militant, he calls me and he's like, Marina, we in um, Nobu, do you want to come for a drink? And I'm like, hey, babe, like my friends are there. And I'm like, maybe I'll loosen him up, you mm -hmm. know? And I'm like, my friends are there. Do you want to go for a drink? He's like, okay, you know, we're, we're next door. Mm -hmm. So we go to Nobu Malibu <clears throat> and that my European friends get us so drunk, of course. So drunk. European that, friends. 
That's what they do. <laughs> Ginta, <laughs> we were crawling out. Oh my God. And he had this like cool, like Porsche little car. Mm -hmm. We drive from Malibu to Sunset Towers. We have like five vodka martinis. More? I don't remember that part, but I remember we get kicked out because we almost had sex under the table or something. <laughs> oh <my> but <laughs> Hi, this is the first time I'm hearing this guy. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and like, we were so embarrassed to say this story in the very beginning, but oh, yeah. you know, now it's kind of funny. Um, but I think we got kicked out. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't do anything like super crazy, but we were not behaving really well. But we went to my friend's house and we and he dropped me off and he sat in his car and he was gonna go home. So I get back to the house and I'm like, that's kind of weird, he left. Mm -hmm. So I call him and I'm like, why did you leave? He's like, oh, can I come back? <laughs> So he Wait, what did he say? Why he left? He he well, he was trying to be a gentleman. Oh, I see. Because you know, you know Brian, he's very polite and very nice mm -hmm. and you know, he wouldn't want to offend me because I was completely mm -hmm. gone. Gone and drunk and um just like, you know, Daddy Martinez they make Oh yeah. They, they do they do their job. So, long story short, he comes back, we have sex. Mm -hmm. all night um and then we kind of you know he goes home in the morning and he didn't text me for like a few days no way a few days a yeah. similar story okay right. a few days what he left for this california boys i don't know he didn't text me and then when i text him like on friday like we were going to this ocean gala or something yeah we, like in a few days we were going on ocean gala and i text him and he was like finally and i'm like was i meant to text you i don't get it yeah you know like what finally but anyway and the friends who introduced us um they invited us to aspen to go for president's week mm -hmm. so it was like right after valentine's we met the day after valentine's and they thought the the aspen would be our kind of like second date mm -hmm. So we kind of arrived to Aspen, we already hooked up like 10 times, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're like, Marina, here's your room, here's Brian's room. We're like, no, we go <laughs> into the same room. <laughs> Save the rooms. <laughs> like, it's okay, like you invite someone else. They're yeah. like, what's going on there? Mm. So fast forward three weeks, I find out I'm pregnant. Three um, weeks after, since you first had sex. Sex with him. So we got, we conceived the baby that either the first day when we mm -hmm. got drunk on Danny Martinis or the Ocean Gala, which was two days after. Mm -hmm. Because that was, you know, they're pretty accurate with how yeah. many days you're pregnant these yeah. days. So I like to think it was the first day because it's meant to be. Yeah. So I think after I told Brian that I got pregnant, even though, you know, we, we, we took trip to Aspen and we took trip to Mexico and we had a lot of fun, but it was more like we really liked each other. Mm -hmm. We were really attracted to each other and we had a lot of fun. But I, I don't feel we had a feeling that like, wow, I met my husband or mm -hmm. he, I don't yeah, think. Especially at that point, you know, it's still so fresh and so new. And he, getting pregnant right away, it's too like, it just adds more question marks, right? But, but I think when I did get pregnant, I think it kind of, for a long time coming, it kind of ruined our, you know, relationships. Mm -hmm. And it took, you know, two to three years to rebuild it. Mm -hmm. Because when I told him I was, you know, I was pregnant, I, I don't think that he was, you know, like, oh, wow, you're pregnant. How did you tell him that you're pregnant? We were driving, um, we were driving, uh, driving to, um, Palm Springs for a getaway, sexy time, vacation, whatever. Mm -hmm. We really like each other, so we hang out every single day. Mm -hmm. um, and we were driving to Palm Springs, and he's like, did your period ever start it? Because I mentioned before, I'm like, I don't know what's going on. It's like probably too sunny here or something. And 
I was like, no, I'm actually pregnant. He's like, oh, that's a funny joke. And I was like, I'm actually not joking. <laughs> and God. Yeah. And I think that definitely ruined the, you know, the weekend. I, was gonna, I wasn't going to oh, really? tell him. Yeah. Because he was like, well, are you going to like take care of it? What are you going to do? And I'm like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And in my head, just so you and everyone understand, I was 30 years old. I was financially independent. Um, I just moved to LA and I got accidentally pregnant. That's not what was my ideal picture is. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, it was usually the the pretty dress, the marriage, the love of my life, you know, and Mm -hmm. here I am, got pregnant for someone I'm super attracted to, but not for one day. And I tell him, I'm like, listen, I, I don't know, but I feel like, I feel like this is my baby and I want to keep it. Mm-hmm. And when I told him that, he was like, what? Like, yeah. I think the both of us needed a minute. So we decided to, to, to not see each other for a while mm-hmm. to like, because like, well, what are you going to say? If the girl tells you she's going to keep the baby, it's my decision. It's my body. Right. Mm-hmm. It's maybe not like the most right thing to do to a guy who you just met, but it was me and I was ready, I guess, because it happened. If it didn't happen, like obviously I wouldn't push on it and we would date and we would have a great time and see if we like each other. Maybe it would have moved, but it happened how it happened. Mm -hmm. And three weeks passes by, I'm still pregnant. Um, I think it took him, it took him a while Mm -hmm. to come back to me and be like, listen, um, I don't know who he talked to or maybe he came to him. Maybe I can ask him. <laughs> but you guys didn't talk for some time? Like when when for him that reali- realization kicked in that <coughs> this is real, Marina wants to keep the baby. And then you said you kind of went separate ways a little bit. Did he like was still texting you and like making sure you're okay? Or just like, or I you kind of like completely... I think for him, it was like, you know? Yeah. Like, what the fuck is happening to my life? Mm -hmm. I think that's what happened to him. And he needed a minute. And for me, it was like, but then I called my mom. And my mom was so happy. Oh, wow. (laughs) She's like, yeah, we're going to raise it. And like, let's do it. And I'm like, I love your mom, by the way. I know. She's amazing. And she's still raising my kids. Mm -hmm. Well, helping me to raise my kids. She's so great. But I think at that moment when my mom was like, we'll help you. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I can do this. Maybe I can Mm -hmm. be that like, maybe I can take this decision for myself and not run from it. And I just, you know, I don't know. Inside of me, I felt I did have abortion before that, like when I was much younger Mm -hmm. and I didn't feel like you know it was the right thing to do at that moment because I was just starting modeling and um, I didn't know how it works and it happened so I couldn't keep the baby unfortunately but I felt that Anna Sophia was my baby I feel like she was my soulmate wow that's so beautiful Marina you knew it I knew it and like even now she she's my soulmate oh it's yeah, like you would make me cry too you know, and and then you know Brian came back to me and he was like let's keep the baby if that's what you want to do and I'll help I'll help you to raise it and let's see like he didn't put too much pressure on us but he said you know let's move in together and have the baby and see if we can make it work mm-hmm. if we like each other and how many months you were pregnant at that point when he came back? A few. I think I was around three or four when I moved in with him mm-hmm. for like a few months. It was kind of like weird. We didn't know what to do. We would like see each other. But like I was like throwing up the whole time. I was just like not feeling well. So, yeah, I think it was, you know, like you were saying, your relationship kind of was like easy and fun. And you were like mm-hmm. going through like that period of, you know, the flowers, whatever they call it, you know. The pink glasses right. moment. Where yeah. yeah. And I, that period for us was like 
through days, you know. Yeah, and just like hit with the reality and decision that you decided to go right. for and do. It's very brave, you know. A lot of women would not do that because they would just think that they could not do that. And you just figured it out and made it work. This is amazing, Marina. It's, thank you. It was definitely was hard for years to Definitely come. no dating stage, right? No you, dating stage. And I feel like, you know, we had one baby and then we had second baby, which mm -hmm. we get into more. But I feel like in a weird way, we've been together for four years and I feel like we just start dating. Maybe. I was about to ask. Yeah. Yeah. I know. We just start dating maybe after I kind of recovered after my second baby. Mm hmm. Maybe six months ago, we started dating again. Not like we weren't dating before, but it's like... It's just different. You always had belly, right? So it's like... I oh. always had belly or breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. And like, I remember this one time we were like having sex after I had Anna Sophia. And he's like, are you drooling on me? <laughs> oh my God. And I'm like, no, it's my milk. And my milk was... Oh, oh my God. That's funny. <laughs> I just feel like we went such a through like non-sexy, not like romantic period right away. Yeah. That for you guys just happened other way around. Completely. Like I was like a, like a chubby, like I, I wasn't chubby, but you know, I had this belly and he just barely knew me. And then mm -hmm. I had like, you know, the boobs with milk always licking around. So I feel like it wasn't like a sexy period for a long yeah. time for us. So it was... You know, even though we get along pretty well on daily basis, we like like the same things, you know, we get along well. Like that mm -hmm. period where we like go for dinner and have wine. I couldn't drink for three years. You know? Yes. <laughs> like have a glass of wine and like be cute. Like we just started having that mm -hmm. like six months ago. It's so interesting. So you guys are in a pink glasses phase now. Really more like or less kind of like <laughs> learning about each other more just as a person instead of being it's all because when you have baby it's all about baby then you have second baby it's about second baby oh both God. babies oh, it's it's yeah so now it's the time where you kind of discover and see each other for who you are right right now that we can like sleep a little and you know like do things together mm -hmm. versus then like me like oh give me this or give me a pump or like mm -hmm. hold my belly like shave my legs <laughs> <laughs> I know those days. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. But so. uh, how was Brian's family accepting you um, and the whole situation? I think Brian's family were the ones who pushed him to come back to me. Mm -hmm. so I, I still don't know if that's the truth, but I think that's the truth. Mm -hmm. His dad is, his dad is uh, the one who raised him mm -hmm. and his three brothers. And I, I love his dad. He's like my favorite person ever. Oh, he's beautiful. a big supporter of our family. And, you know, he was just in Miami visiting the kids. And listen, it was the it was the shaky decision I took. Mm -hmm. And and if I don't know if Brian, let's say Brian was a shitty person and didn't come to me and didn't want to be in Anna Sophia's life. I would probably be in a different space now, but it would be my decision still, mm -hmm. you know? I would probably be fine, but I'm forever grateful for yeah, for Brian. You just blew my mind, Marina. <laughs> Such a beautiful story. Okay. And, and it all worked out. I mean, it's that's what I mean. It's like I'm grateful and I pray to God every day that it worked out this way because mm -hmm. It could have. It was a chance of 50-50. It was a thin chance, too. Like, mm -hmm. It was a thin chance. He's going to like actually become you know, my boyfriend, the father of my children. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Just because, you know... Did you see him as a father of your children, like when you met him? He had a dog. <laughs> yes. And he adored her. And he yeah. was like picking up the poop and like, I can never do that. Was like, I never <laughs> had a dog. <laughs> I never had a dog in New York. You know how we all were always on a plane? Yeah. Like I couldn't have no, a dog. New York is hard to have a dog. So I never took care of anyone. Mm -hmm. 
And I think my children was the first, the first mm -hmm. beings that I took care of. I had a parrot when I was little. But he was like so like good with his dog. I was like, wow, he's probably gonna be a good dad. It's so interesting because when I met Brian at that restaurant, and one of the first things he showed me was his dog's picture, and I thought it's so amazing. He was so close with his dog. Unfortunately, he passed away last year. But this boy is so special and so nice. And me seeing that Brian raised this this incredible dog. It's so funny actually how. It kind of does something to you as a woman. As you're like, okay, he's like this with a dog. It's like he they're must be babies. Really good guy and like very caring, right? That's exactly how I felt, and that's how I always tell you how Brian and Brian are so similar mm -hmm. in their ways, and I think that's what me and you saw in them. I and can't wait to interview them and hear their story. It's probably going to be completely opposite, right? Uh -huh. It will be very interesting to hear their perspective and such a beautiful story, Marina. You I'm too, so happy Ginta. for your life and how it all worked out. And for me too, it, it somehow it just all falls into places. But um, next episodes, I'm going to tell more about how I got pregnant because it was journey. We had a long dating right. at first and then we went into parenthood. And so interesting how your journey is so different. But we both were like broken by all these guys and broken yes. relationships before, you know, and not believing that and and not believing that it could actually work out ever. I thought I'm going to be alone forever. Me too. Me too. I wasn't ready for a relationship. I wasn't looking. It just happened. And it's very interesting how life sometimes puts things in perspective and makes things work when you feel the most broken and most you can be in darkest place. But then there's always the end of like there's always light at the end of the tunnel that's what i was gonna right. say there is always a rainbow after the rain mm -hmm. and like someone told me something once that i always try to interpret it in my life is that there is always white black white black and you should take the happy moments as well as bad moments the same mm -hmm. not to get too happy when you're happy because there's always going to be bad moment but the good thing, the bad moment, is always going to end as well. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to know that. Or when you're sick, mm -hmm. well, you're not going to be sick in a week. So you're like, okay, you feel like shit. But like, just like relax into it and go with the flow and you, you're going to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because right before I met Brian, I went through a very dark period. And just, I always said that Brian in my life was God sent. Oh. It was just really, just really felt like unreal. I'm like, wow, it's actually happening with me. Right. Do I deserve this? <laughs> you are. For a guy to actually treat me really nice and res res with respect and with love and just would do anything like Brian. Brian's been through with, with me through a lot because of my previous relationship, going through divorce, Trauma. meaning like all the paperwork, but still you're dealing with lawyers with like so much stuff you deal with. And it was funny when I met him for that lunch, before his flight, one of the first things I told him, I was like, listen, this is what's happening with my life right now. This is what I'm going through. And I just tell you this right away instead of like later you find out or like I'm just like hiding. I'm like, listen, I'm going through a divorce, you know, and it's I think it's a pretty big statement for a guy, too. He's a single guy. He's a good looking guy. He could have, you know, go and meet any other girl. But for him just to stick with me and go through this like crazy times i will always be grateful for that time and just yeah. to this day like for him always sticking by my side brian is a very good guy and i always like thought that but now that we got closer and i actually spent time with you guys brian mm -hmm. is you know incredible and thank you and brian too and they're very similar <laughs> they are. maybe crazy. they are the angels that separated <laughs> right <laughs> maybe they're actually s brothers maybe they're brothers <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ginta. Well, thank you for your beautiful story. Oh, and thanks, babe, for your beautiful story. We'll meet next week. Yes. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.